Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Doodle Robot and today you've tuned in for The Robot Report. This is episode number three and today's date is October 18th. So as I've said before, this is a bi-weekly-ish. It's actually been three weeks since my last report. Um, coloring diary, coloring journal, whatever you'd like to call it. We go through some finished pages some whips, what I've purchased. It just seems a little more organic to me to do it this way. So we will start with finished pages first, then we'll do whips, and then we'll do my haul for the last three weeks since I last saw you. So we have a couple of books here that you saw in process, um, I think the time before and the last time for that one. So um, we've got, may as well do the small one first. I'll zoom you in. This is Fedorables Minis. This is number one by Selena Fennec. This was my Crayola Colors of the World Mostly Markers Challenge to everybody out there who has the markers. And quite a few people participated. I appreciate it. I thank you. I'll have more of an update in my, uh, finished pages at the end of the month. But this is mine. So it is, well, it would have been all Crayola Colors of the World markers. <laughs> the skinny ones and the, the, I think they call them thin line and broad line, maybe, something like that. Uh, I used both of those, mostly the thin line markers, which kind of scratched the paper a little bit, but we had an accident here. I decided, I, when you saw it last, I think I didn't have the column done, the moon wasn't done, the base coat was filled in, but the hair, the snake hair for Medusa, um, they were all plain, and I thought it was a little too contrasty with plain snakes and a very decorative body, bodice thing going on there, so I decided I was going to, you know, add to the snakes there, and I, I totally messed up this one, so... I had to go over a pot with a Posca pen on these, but you can see where I was doing diamonds here, and now this poor little snake is purple. We're just going to call that snake sick. That's why she's cradling it, because, you know, he's not feeling very well. <laughs> so anyways, I have since finished it. I tried some unique things. The um, I don't think that Crayola Colors of the World... The, the, the nibs on those, they don't really like the Amazon paper. They kind of want to tear it up. So it was there was a lot of peeling going on there. But we, we managed to get all the way through it. Um, some of the areas I really like. I don't know how they film. I can't really see. Uh, I like... I think it could have been better, but I do like the moon. For the moon, I based the moon, and then I rubbed the marker on a, a palette and picked it up with a brush to try to get the moon effect. Need some practice there. It's the first time I kind of did something like that. I, I like I like the cliff I drew there. Like, I'm not sure. Maybe this should have left the snakes blank and flat. I don't know. I'm not going to worry about it now. I just finished it a little while ago, but yeah, so that's my Crayola Colors of the World Challenge. It's finally done. Finally, finally. Happy to have that done. All right, and the other one you saw in progress last time, oh, it was my, my washi tape experiment. That is done now, too. So I believe the last time you saw it, I I think I had a little more to do. So it's it was an experiment with silky gel crayons. That's the pink in the background there. And washi tape. That's pretty much all these interesting shapes here. I'd never used washi tape, so I wanted to give it a try, I guess, in a big way. <laughs> so, um, But since then, I have added the black outlines. I painted this yellow. I tried to pull it all together. It was very discombobulated. You know, I was kind of experimenting with two different things. I think for an experiment, it came out okay. I did like, you really have to let the silky gel crayons dry. 
um, but then I went on top of that bright pink and I did some of these colors here to just try to, to pull it all together a little bit more. So, I don't know, it was a fairly successful experience. I, I didn't cut, I managed not to cut through the paper with the, doing the washi tape, so I was, that, that was a win in my, in my category, that was a win. I would only use washi tape for special effects here and there. I wouldn't do it on a whole thing again. But like I said, I was kind of practicing, getting to know the medium. I am really liking silky gel crayons, though. Although this is particularly bright, but um, I like that you can layer them. You can... I, f I feel like there's a lot of potential. There's more, more practice to be had with the silky gel crayons, but I think there's a lot of potential there. And they're a very inexpensive medium, but I would suggest that you, oh, they feel so silky when they're dry. You do have to let them dry for several days. One of the things I did was I went over this with fixative, and it gave a funny sheen to the silky gel crayons. I would not do that again. I would just set it aside and let it dry for several days, three or four days, and then go back to it. I think once it's dry, it isn't, it isn't really going to go anywhere. All right, so that experiment was done. That's Abstract Boho Coloring Book by Allie Plitt. Two that I worked on and just completed in the time since I last saw you, so there's no like progress reports on them. I just did them. This is 50 Halloween Mandalas. I love this book. I don't give it enough love, I think. But we did the Hat with Feet. And so it's alcohol marker. Let's see here. What did we do? Alcohol marker, Arteza gel pens, Jelly Roll, Posca, Prismacolor. I can't remember where I used the Prismacolor. I feel like that's a mistake. But anyways, um, a Hoo water base marker. And here, to accent the stars there, I used my new Art Philosophy Metallic Pastel Accent Watercolor Paints. So they're relatively new. I haven't used them before in an application. But I figured this color has a slight green tinge to it. So I used it, I used it there to break up the, uh, the green stripes. The green stripes are added as well as the border uh, because I don't like I don't like a round circle on a big piece of paper like this I don't know so I'm going to do that with all of the pictures in this book and I bought this book specifically because most of these pictures have an element that can be brought out so for example on the scarecrow I felt like the you know the little gingham pattern could be brought out there uh, here the graveyard could be replicated there so I have ideas for most of these pages that I I want to do so I finished that one started and finished that one and this was another old Garani thing this was actually an old Garani thing here this Medusa unfortunately Summer went by and I never did it. So I finally did it way later than I should have. But this one is inspired by Olgarani. I didn't make the due date on this one. I finished it like she comes out with her video on Sunday. I finished it on Sunday. So uh, this is Free Spirit. There's no, there's no artist listed for this one. But this, this prompt of Olga's was arrows. So... I remember this page right off the bat because I remember thinking, well, it's a very compelling page, but all that was on the page was the arrows. I drew the green circle, so that wasn't there. But it's like, I don't think I would ever do the, I mean, I liked the arrows. I didn't dislike them. It's just that they were, I don't know. It didn't, it called to me yet. It didn't call to me because there's just so much white on the paper. But once Olga Ronnie had the, the challenge, I'm like, oh, Okay, I'll do that arrow page that <laughs> I probably wouldn't wouldn't get around to doing otherwise. So all I did was add a big circle there. I saw this somewhere. 
on somebody's channel or a picture on the internet or something where somebody did it. I think there were bugs all over the place. And there was a big circle. But anyways, I don't know who that was, so whoever you were, good job. Uh, so I stole that idea and did it here for the arrows. I looked up Native American kind of decorative arrows to see the, the colors, and I just kind of picked out the colors. So this is paint, apple barrel paint, and just a hoo-hoo water-based markers. That's all that is. Oh, and a Posca paint marker. Oh, I think I had to fill something in that there was a boo-boo I had to fix. So we started and finished that one within the time frame. All right, so some whips that are further along now. I think you've seen this one before. It's a little further along now. I think before I just had the yellow of the flower and I've done the I've done the green greenery stuff. I've done the ses, uh, not sesame seeds. <laughs> the oh my gosh, sunflower seeds. I've started the background. There's going to be like this swirly pattern background thing going on, so I've started that. So that is where we are. A little further along. Hopefully this one will be done at the end of the month for my end of the month pages. That's Oh, I don't know. Autumn by Rita Berman. And ah, oh, this one's super cool. I'm doing a buddy color. Don't look, Carrie Kay. Look away. Don't see it yet. This is Easy Boho again by Allie Plitt. These, these are just great for experimenting and doing wild things with. So Carrie Kay and I are doing a buddy color. And we told each other that we could pick either book that we have by this person, the Boho book, and any page. So we're both picking, you know, different book, different page kind of thing. But we're doing it with op art. We're changing it into an op art piece. So it's not done yet. And I decided to do op art slash pop art. And this is very inspired by Roy Lichtenstein. So he usually has a big word like, pop or stop or wow or something you know i'll think batman there 1960s tv show batman so i thought i'd do the same thing he's usually got a double kind of like starburst or triple starburst so we have our op art elements i haven't colored that in we have kind of our pop art elements and so it's it's coming along there's still a lot to do here I probably have to outline things. I'm probably going to do blue back here. This will be black and white. This will probably be blue and black, maybe. I don't know what colors these are going to be yet. I think an orange, maybe. I'm not sure. So that's where that one is. Not done, but will be hopefully by the end of the month. All right. You can look back, Carrie Kay, if you even looked away. And we're a little farther along in Spooky Girl. I haven't shown Spooky Girl for a long time. This has been a whip for a while. When I first got the book, I went in and I based everything. And so I came back to it since it's, you know, Halloween time. I figured I would. And all I've worked on was the hair. And for the hair, I actually used my um, Polychromos instead of... Instead of my trusty Prismacolors, I'm trying my Polychromos there. I'm not sure. The jury's still out on Polychromos. I still I see white spaces, but mm, it's Amazon paper, so I don't I don't know what to think. But I really like what I did with the teddy bear there. I was trying to create that teddy bear material stuff, and that's just with Posca. Posca pins. Several different colors. I don't know. Four or five different colors of Posca pins. And some little worn areas. So yeah. So I'm pretty pleased with my teddy bear texture there. So I still have to do, you know, more shading, blending, stuff like that. I'm trying to, in some ways, replicate the cover with the scratchy style. So... I got to go into the curtains and her face and maybe her dress a little bit and, and try to do that. So it's a little farther along, although it's weird. 
I should ask you guys, she's got nails on this hand. And this hand has no nails. Should I add nails? <laughs> I feel like I should add nails. That kind of is weird to me. But anyways, let me know in the comments what you what, what would you do. All right, that is Spooky Girl by Coco Wyo. And then I've started another one. This is one of my new books. So part of my haul, which I'll go through in just a second. This is Relaxing Patterns by Ollie Colors. Love that little logo. And they sent me this book to just do a flip through on my channel. And so I couldn't resist because it's got, there's a flip through, you can see it. But it's got such good, such good movement pieces here. I really, I really like these. I mean, look at that. That's so good. So yeah, lots of good pictures in here. If you want the full flip through, you can see it on my channel. Back just a few weeks. And so this is what I've started thus far. So we've got this, this big movement-y thing here. It's kind of maybe like a flower plant of some kind. And so I've got part of that colored and part of the background. And that's just with alcohol markers. Generally, in my opinion, the, uh, the Amazon print books are for alcohol markers and having fun. I'm trying to get better at them. Someday, someday we'll be there. So... Hopefully that will be finished when the end of the month rolls around as well. So those are my whips and my done things, and we're off to what came since last we spoke. So this had been ordered a long, long time ago. It took like a month to get to me, but everybody's got it already. It's the Asian book by Rita Berman. Oh, this book is so good. I like these are pictures are so detailed. She just gets more and more detailed as she goes. But I really like Asian-influenced pretty much anything, so. A lovely book. I'm glad it finally made it to me. So we have that. And then I went off on a mid-century modern kick because I like mid-century modern, number one. Number two, I was working in a mid-century modern book, and I... There were some aspects that I really liked. I liked the cat picture I did. You can see that in episode two of the robot report. So I was looking for another cat book and I've already done flip throughs of both of these. So you can check those out. They're all in one video. Uh, my first cat book arrived fairly damaged. This one is less damaged, although the spine is kind of wonky, but I guess we'll keep this one. So this was my replacement. Um, so yeah, this just has lots of like 1950s, 60s, mid-century modern cat pictures. I prefer a darker line work, but I'm not going to let that dissuade me because there's a lot of good cat pictures in here that I, I would like to do. So, lots of good pattern. Oh. Very good. Very good book. Like I said, you can see the flip through. The other mid-century modern book I got is completely mislabeled. It says Mid-Century Modern Retro by Donna Freetog. And this one was, these were both blind buys. I did not know what I was going to get, but this is so spacey. And I ordered it because in the description, you know, you go to the review, somebody said too many spaceships or something. And I'm like, oh, spaceships, I'm buying that. So I'm not disappointed. Again, I would like it if the line work were a bit darker because I'm going to use alcohol markers. So, But I've decided that I may just go in and darken the line work myself. So lots of really cool mid-century modern interiors with a very sci-fi twist to them and like I said these are both in in a video I flipped through both of them so you can check that out if you're interested and two more that I got this was Carrie Kay's fault uh, I had never I'd seen it a long long time ago and I wanted it but there was no flip through online so, I, you know, I forgot about it, and now, a year and a half later or whatever, Carrie Kay showed it on her channel, and she flipped through it enough that I got an idea of what was in there. And I'm like, oh, yes, I need that one. So I bought it. This is 
Cosmic and Eternal Love, an Everlasting Love Story and Coloring Book. It's written and illustrated by um, Rita Sen. It's even got, I guess, a DVD or CD, I, I don't know what it is, of music, I think. I don't have a CD player, so I won't be able to play it, but... Yeah, this is very ornate. Not Zen Doodly, I would say. I would say this is ornate. And very much in a kind of a Persian, Middle East, Arabesque style. And I have since put up a flip through. Just so that there would be one online. Generally, I do flip throughs of, of ones that are not already there. Or maybe there's one, but it's not very good or something. So yeah, beautiful, beautiful work, but it's very busy and ornate. So, so yeah, if you're interested in seeing that, you can check out the flip through. That's a new one that came, inspired by Carrie Kay. And another one that just, um, YouTube decided to put this, this video in my feed. It's a, it was a flip through of Dracula, and of course, you know, it's a vampire, so of course I had to watch it. But yeah, I did a flip through of this one. This book is beautiful too. These two books, I'm not sure if they're in print or it. I, I suspect not. I So I think they might be out of print. They're a little hard to find. I think I had to go through like third party sellers or something. But this book is beautiful. It's unusual. I like the, I really like the style. I like the movement. It's very much like another book where it has lots of quotes. What was that one? It's a poem by who I can't remember. Um, but like, I love this page, like with the, the, the chick, I'm going to call it a chariot every time it's a carriage and horses, but like, it's got such good movement. It's again, it's like that ornate old world look to it. This one's just interesting. Oh, he's so pretty. I talk about him in my flip through. I want him to bite me. He's so pretty. Um, even the wallpaper pages are very are very interesting and different and unique. They're not like boring wallpaper pages. So there's an entire flip through of this one on my channel as well. Like look at the ornateness of this bed. I love that. Love it. I'll get that in frame for you. Sorry. So yeah, so this is a really cool book also. So that's Bram Stoker's Dracula. This one was illustrated by Shelley Carroll. Copyright 2016. So you know, it's Halloween. May as well. And since it was hard to find, I figured I'd just get it now. So that was how many books low buy. Remember, I'm supposed to be on low buy because I'm moving in May, the end of May. That was six books, <laughs> six books <laughs> for this three week period. Although in all fairness, well, this one was given to me and this one was ordered a long time ago. It just took forever to get here. So I guess that's four, but anyways, not so good on the low buy, but that is it for my robot report episode three. I thank you for joining me. I appreciate your time. I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time. Live long and prosper. Bye-bye.